welcome back to the harbor i'm your host the kino cowboy we got sky with hot sauce you can pound it <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got casher and we're doing a valentine's day episode it's not my name okay in boston anyway what's the last name flasher damn <laughs> good morning uh, on the eve of super bowl sunday um we're here to talk about the super bowl today uh, go well, bingles i can't say that go but uh, <laughs> what i will say is is that our friend matt prine is probably cheating at world just to make himself look good anyway <laughs> <laughs> hey congrats uh, matt prine for uh, making me want to kill myself more <laughs> and Castro came up with the idea for a cast today or well, not today but for today yeah it was like well it's valentine's day what coming up can we do anything for that and i was like well what if we um what if we took an old uh a movie that we liked when we were teenagers and and looked at it again now that we're full-grown adults and have been for quite some time and have definitely and hopefully matured since we were 17 18 years old so uh <laughs> we're doing uh 500 days of summer which was the indie darling that got everyone uh to jerk off to that style of of romance yeah it kind of started the domino point of fucking hips you know there was some uh, well what other stuff michael sarah did it because because what other films do you think it influenced i don't know scott you can name them well just uh well the okay the blueprint, i'm asking your question <laughs> the blueprints was that uh what was that one movie with uh what's her name natalie portman and zach braff garden state yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that's, which, that's that an actual blueprint. good fucking movie though no it was, dude, i was like the summer but like garden state's better um well, here's the thing i haven't seen garden state because i asked adrian i said would you would would i like garden state and you said and i quote you would throw up and yeah, I said, know. okay, then I'm not going to watch it. You wouldn't like, I love it. I think it's a great movie. I might love to hate it. I bet if I got it, if I had a glass of Chardonnay and was like per- particularly morose one evening, I might be able to find some joy. It's got a stellar that. soundtrack. Yeah. I, yeah. I like the shins. People that are listening, yeah, listening at home. Uh, my teenage years, I was very much an indie boy listening to the shins and Vampire Weekend, Passion Pit, watching indie movies and flicks. And cool shit. So of course this was my up my alley. I uh you know was very not emotionally mature. So red I red pill thought, and based, you mean <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, wasn't red pill and based yet. Yeah. I am now. No, but uh, Adrian was a pickup artist. He was negging girls at the bars. Oh yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> it was just like um <clears throat> this is my idea of like romance is a you know as a i have not watched this film since i was like 18 19 dude yeah it's been it was like 16 when i saw this shit it feels like Like, i was real young and of course back then i was like oh tom you poor fool you know sad He, he, he got screwed over blah 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 and now i'm like hmm let's watch this again and see how how let's talk about let's Let's talk about our histories with this real quick, if okay. we have much history. And you kind of talked about yours. My history, I think I was about 19. I can't remember exactly if this was the part part of the spate of romantic comedies that I saw after my first real breakup when I was 20 or so. Um, so it may or may not. Um, my reaction to the movie at the time you know, almost 10 years ago now, now that we're actually the age of the characters in these movies. Um, we might be older than the characters. I, I, th- I think we're about the same age as the actors. We might be oh, older well, yeah, than the characters. Sure. Uh, the characters might be kind of like... like they're like mid-20s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like, like recent graduates is what right. I interpreted it as. The... Still had some hope and could change their lives, unlike us. Well, um, I think this also might have been written and or shot right before the 2008 crisis. Yeah. It came out in 09, yeah, and there's no cool. smartphones. They're all using, like, Blackberries and Razors and stuff. Yeah, so, I didn't think about it coming out before the crisis. Yeah, things are a lot happier then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's that's what – um it does make it interesting, and it is a little bit of a time capsule, Uh and we'll get into it. Did you guys see the two towers in it, the Twin Towers, man? They're, they're <laughs> still in it anyway just kidding, it's, not it's, in it. it's in los angeles <laughs> i actually remember it being in new york that's I don't, what i, I guess... thought maybe it's the mandela effect we're in the wrong timeline scott 
Oh, uh, maybe. I always, well, I think I just thought that it, he worked for a greeting card company. And when I think of copywriting, publishing, that sort yeah. of thing, I think New York, but I guess it was LA. Um, Cause they were like, we're not filming this out of location. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're, this is a, a relatively low budget movie. The um, Forgot whatever uh, he did work for a greeting card company. And uh, I was like, oh shit, I guess uh, there was, there was another romantic movie that came out where he's a greeting card, but he actually enjoyed making greeting cards or, or like romantic cards. And it was her. Uh, he's writing. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. So I was I like, like that comparison, cause he fucking hates it. And then like, Joaquin Phoenix's character and her kind of really adores it as longtime customers and things like that. That's because so, Joaquin Phoenix's character is fucking 10 times more complex than with Oh, yeah, play. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is Justin Gordon Levitt playing a 13 year old boy who's actually. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, we'll it's get kind into of it. Funny. Yeah. It's, it's easily the most like, if, if a guy tells you this is his favorite movie, run. This is your red flag now. <laughs> This is male manipulator, the fucking movie. Oh, here's funny. Uh, <laughs> this, is funny. Uh, this was a, the the reason I have this DVD is because it was gonna be one of like a couple presents I was gonna give to uh, my serious girlfriend when I was eighteen. My first serious girlfriend. Namer. Namer. No, I was eighteen. And then we broke up when I was 19. And that was one of the few. I was like, you're going to love this movie. <laughs> and so I was like, well, fuck this. I you might it. love it, but not for the reason. I watched, I watched this and I watched Blue uh, Valentine. Almost said Blue yeah. Velvet. That would have been different. <laughs> Blue Velvet. I got Blue Velvet got really confused. Are those your breakup <laughs> movies that you went to when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Five oh, Days of Summer and oh, Blue, Blue Val Valentine. Blue Valentine is the first time I've ever had to pause a movie to cry because I watched that after my first I, uh, That's yeah, a great movie. Though. movies were like starkly different. Mine was like the Muppets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bought I remember because I, I bought you that DVD. <laughs> yeah, dude, I fucking blew that shit up. I watched that like 12 times in a I'm, week. Well, I'm I'm glad I could help. Um <laughs> The uh, and both of, crying, were, like and both of our exes were talking about are married now, so <laughs> yeah. that's where we're, and we're doing a podcast for 20 people on YouTube. Shout out to Megan Hamley, so, proud of you. That's awesome. The yeah, no, I'm on, I'm cool with you know, I don't keep up with all my exes, but I don't have any ill will for most of them. Yeah, um, me, me either, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> not Megan Hamley. Megan Hamley's a sweetheart. I don't, no, 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 Megan's cool. Um, I'm happy. I haven't talked to her for years, but I'm happy for. Her. But, uh, yeah. So you want to know one of my uh, favorite things about the start of this? So basically, like he's trying to, you know, flirtatious with the the woman at work, who is of course Zoe fucking Deschanel. Oh yeah, quirky queen. <laughs> like, hey, here's the thing, queen, yeah, queen of me, quirky. I want to talk about this real quick. Is she the quirky queen, and is oh. she the quirky queen of her own doing? I have not seen New Girl. Yeah, she's so. absolutely the quirky queen. That's okay. Her, yeah, that's her thing. Jessica, her, she like back in. I the, love New Girl, by the way. Back in I'm that time period, she was like doing little. Uh, she did like this little indie album, cutesy, tumblery, yeah. and I don't know. I, I always liked her. She's got her. She's she for like she was peak like every weird kid's like obsession. Yeah, for, without like, being years. weird. You yeah, know, like a, it's uh, like, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. She's not weird at I know, all, but it's like she's just quirky. She's, she's, that, a, she's the girl. The, you she's know. the book girl. The girl that reads all the books at school, and it's the yeah, same. but not good. But she book. she reads like John Green and stuff. It's yeah, not like that, uh, <laughs> not Baudrillard or Baudrillard or whatever. Or something. But she was exclusively reads the Bhagavad Gita. The same <laughs> the, people that the, uh, the, uh, I, with Zoe are the same people that think. Uh, Ramona Flowers is the shit, and you know, yeah, it's the archetype. same thing. Uh, but anyway, one of my favorite favorite scenes comes when he first talks to her in the elevator, and this is when I was like, "God, this guy's a douchebag!" Is that he's fucking just actively listening to the Smiths? <laughs> I was like, "Of course, he's listening to the fucking Smiths." He is that Smith. Do you not like the Smiths? Smiths? I fucking hate Morrissey. I think he's a fucking really? piece of shit. Yeah. Why is he a piece <laughs> of shit? Because I, I don't know anything uh, really, about Morrissey. You should you should read him to just Google John Morrissey is a piece of shit. I could uh, I could I could imagine why? he's a he's a musician. And he's the most like, fucking like abrasive, 
fucking just like he's literally like the most red not even red pill but like just like in your face like lip pseudo liberal ever like not even like giving anything good to the conversation will shut down whole festivals if they serve meat at their festival <laughs> and uh, a lot of his music a lot of his music resonates with a lot of fucking male manipulators uh, that's another red flag if you fucking love the smiths and and uh, you know what my my manipulative ex guess what band she likes fucking the smiths <laughs> dude it's fucking it's, i swear to god it's cut and dry every fucking manipulated person that resonates with fucking all the smiths music they're, they're good but hey. fuck dude stop making your favorite band i really like chris kethard's comedy albums though and he likes the smiths he has a morrissey tattoo yeah he's a fucking uh, dude, yeah i, 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 I want to back up right before that because i want to hit the first part where he basically says like he knew she was the one and it does lo- does love at first sight actually exist no you know, no it doesn't no because love is that. love is something you learn this as you're older love is something cultivated and grown there has to be chemistry or a spark at first of course but you gotta have, you gotta have semen and you gotta have an egg and you gotta have a test tube and that's how you grow love yeah, yeah you gotta have a man in the closet watching everything that's the <laughs> first indicator that you're like wow this guy is uh huh stupid immature for his age uh, emotionally but um love is definitely you know a subjective thing and you know it, sometimes it doesn't work out that way that it's you know you fall you meet someone you get married in two weeks and then you're together for 65 years but that doesn't happen very often be a fucking realist yeah like, um, also that was back when child like, brides existed yeah and the iud's didn't exist and they were like <laughs> oh we have to have a shotgun wedding <laughs> yeah no but like i know i know people like personally in my life that have been together for going on like five six years now that like the 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 person moved in with them after like a week and a half out of two weeks just out of necessity and now they've been they had a strong relationship for a while so it's like that's not necessarily love at first sight but like completely immersing yourself in that person it does it can be successful but also it can also lead to like codependency issues and just fucking more issues down there. yeah considering like it flash forwards early on and like yeah. after they broke up and he's like smashing plates like, yeah what the fuck yeah like to me yeah. now that's really yeah. like yeah abusive ish yeah. like that it's, actually it's like a just, tile just just the drink wall. like the rest of us yeah go on a drug binge <laughs> you know and they, they you play three hundred dollars like, worth of plates or you can go buy a three hundred dollar ball of cocaine it's, it's uh, they, they play him smashing plates like it's there's a slight comedy tinge to it but like to me it's kind of scary that's <laughs> fucked up dude. his little sister's the one who comes and calms him down little chloe grace moretz oh yeah i forgot she was in that shit she's kind I of forgot. a manic pixie dream girl in this movie <laughs> she's 12 i'm not saying not in like a dating sense but she's the not a manic pixie dream girl she's yeah don't like call the, her that it's weird the wise cool i don't know uh, she, she is like uh, wise yeah but she's the wise she's hit, cool she's hit girl without the cocaine dude. and fucking swords oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. chloe, wow. chloe wow. grace moretz from the bethesda game dishonored <laughs> 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 it's cool seeing her because you know we we've grown up with her like she's our age uh, I think a little bit younger, so I forget that she was in that fucking movie. Like, and it's it's a fun role for her. Yeah, it's she's a little fucking younger. Stupid that her older brother has to get dating advice from a fucking twelve year old girl. Yeah, like, that's fucking you know. pathetic. I was like, how are they so how have so much of an age difference? Then I remember I literally have a brother who's twelve years younger than me. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh yeah, fifteen years younger than me. But uh. The- <laughs> also like right after our parents that scene, be fucking bro right after that scene they're like um there are two kinds of people men and women and i was like I saw the, ooh, trigger, <laughs> ooh. controversial now i saw it too i was like let's show this to gen z i, I wonder what if they will ever discover this movie also they 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 call uh zoe's character average at 120 pounds i was like uh-oh that's, yeah, that's fucked. I didn't. Fucked I guess I missed up, that part. I didn't realize that. He's like oh. five foot five and 120 pounds, very average. You know, I was like, whoa, for <laughs> LA, baby. <laughs> yeah, Dude. for LA, where the the water supply is contaminated with last night's dinner from all the fingers getting stuck down people's own throats. Oh. That's a bully. And you know, like all of these like comedic like flashbacks or like 
done in you know french new wave style it, it makes the film cutesy it makes it stand out from There's a lot of really rom-coms. cool shots throughout the film and like sure. cuts and takes good, and uh, yeah, hardware good color store. palette like, for nostalgia especially when they're like talking and it's very yellow yeah. with the sun behind them yeah. and stuff yeah i like, I like the, all the, that. The, the cuts they take for uh like uh when they're going that's like a dating montage yeah uh, kind of all simulated like sync up and things like that it's a well-made movie um just content of it's fucking yeah yeah well, yeah, especially... the, you know it's the color palette's gonna be good because it's the same guy who directed amazing spider-man one and two oh uh, mark yeah. webb now that makes sense why um <laughs> gwen stacy and and uh peter parker they're they're the way they talk is all okay hold on i have to i have to interrupt real quick i'm looking at mark <laughs> webb's i'm imdb <laughs> he's just like he, will y'all quit whispering to each other and fucking have a normal conversation wait until you hear this he is <laughs> set to direct i think if i'm reading this correctly a live action remake of the 2016 anime film your name oh why does that need to, why do you need no. to remake no that? no oh, that's, that's a, a fucking modern movie. masterpiece what the yeah. fuck no leave it alone i love that movie uh, that's a beautiful love story oh, yeah. damn, that's one of my favorite romantic films of like the past and then we'll have years. all this quirky uh cutesy whispering to each other in it it'll be fun. it'll be set in williamsburg <laughs> god that made my stomach hurt <laughs> Fuck! I don't and, need uh, that. Stop another thing I found funny animations. about the movie is like he asked Summer, like, "Oh, why'd you, uh, why'd you come to LA?" And she's like, "Oh, out of boredom." I was like, "Wow, that's the most privileged thing I've ever heard." Yeah, Zoe Deschanel kind of reeks of like that you're immediately. Uh, she has you're family in the industry. Y'all are immediately making it. Can live in a nice apartment in LA? How? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like minimum two thousand a month what i thought was real white privilege is when they go to that bar and she walks back to her car by herself (laughs) (laughs) i was like that's not fucking you can tell this is a fucking fantasy (laughs) (laughs) i was like man you're a dingus for not walking to her she's gonna get fucking beat the fuck up on the way to her car yeah another thing i do like about the film is it's such a simple concept to use 500 days as a measurement but it makes it so much easier to jump around in time like you want to. Yeah, man, I enjoyed that. You know confused. where you are in the story. Yeah. Such a simple what? thing, but like, I don't like really at the see beginning the they established the, like that. Uh, they huh. they established the breakup at the beginning at 144 days. So you have you know what's happening between then. You have your honeymoon period. You have your breakup, and then you have his demented fucking downfall. Right. So you're able to like kind of guess. So like when they jump between this area, you're like, okay, this is right before the breakup. Or this is right after. Or this is way down the line because they only lasted fucking like three months. No, like no, three, no. Four they, months. They break up around the three hundred mark. It says one forty four in the beginning. Whenever they're sitting dude. at the diner. Hold on, uh, I found a I found a GitHub text file that lists everything, um, the uh, of the timeline. So, um, I think yeah, I think around day three hundred two ninety. Okay. Well, never That's, mind. Ex- ignore everything I fucking said before. No, I'm just, just saying. saying I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I was just. I couldn't believe how, like, nervous and weird he was acting. It was like it, it was the first time he's ever talked to a girl. Yeah, absolutely. Was, I was like, dude, just fucking take it easy for a second. If you play it cool, it'll be much easier. Yeah. Also, what, he's handsome. <laughs> he should be crushing pussy. Well, he He's acted like, a like uh, eight. it reminded me exactly how I acted around girls when I was a freshman in high school. So I'm oh, sure yeah. that's why it seemed more believable to me back then, you know, in high school, because that's how he's acting like a high schooler. I, I do think the film successfully gets you to feel for him when you're at that young age. But sure. I, the, 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 the intents of this character, I don't think it were ever to like him. I don't think that's the director's no, intent. You're, no, but. you're made to like him at certain points, for sure. There, there, he's not completely irredeemable, and he's not a bad person. He's just well, dumb. No, he's just fucking stupid. He's just, it's insane. He's, he's already mad at her talking about, like, she said that she went out and, you know, and that she had sex or whatever, and they're not even 
seeing each other yet they haven't even gone on a date yet and he's like already <sighs> mad god yeah that's absolute high school shit right that's there. that's really bad also that's the so whole bad. don't if you're gonna be upset about it don't ask about your partner's sexual history well it was yeah. before they were even part like, it was before yes that. about yeah the that's sexual later in the movie. later this is just her in passing talking about like she hooked up the other night or whatever which is something that i don't even at unless you have HIV, I don't really care what your sexual history is. I don't even ask that. Wait, you right. if they have HIV? He's so fucking immature. He, I, like, he puts, he, like, insecure. idealizes. He idealizes way too much. He puts too much pressure on what, because because of one fucking thing, you know? Like, if anything, this is a great exercise for me to remind myself to not be anywhere near insecure as this guy. And just like, oh, yeah, I'm glad I'm not like yeah. this. <laughs> Are there not more women in L.A.? Is the city of three and a half million people? Yeah. Well, is it, it a um, quirky girl? Quirky, quirky, but, quirky girl. But not really. Quirky. I mean, this all the joke, <clears throat> like no joking, no fooling. If <laughs> the movie would have made way more sense if they would have came out and said, "Hey, this is about a guy on the spectrum who doesn't know how to talk to girls," and he <laughs> would he would have came off way less insane. <laughs> they got to make it more interesting. Offensive. They gotta make it more offensive to be autistic in the two. No, no, no. I think it'd be interesting to have a, a like he's trying his best, but he's autistic kind there's of. There's a like, there's TV that's, a, that's a different movie. I'm well, not saying a, you can't have that. I think you that's are, a love on the spectrum. spectrum. That's a that's well, a no. TV there's show. there's there's actual like I, I've seen a couple really good uh, portrayals of like uh, people on the spectrum dating in like actual like scripted TV. Um, there's a show on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, on the spectrum? No, that's that's a real life thing, Scott. This oh. is uh, scripted. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's uh, it's got like Michael Rapaport and everybody in it, but it's following a kid who is, uh, it's his senior year in high school, and he's learning about relationships and friendships and how to prepare for the real world and things like that. It's really, really well well made. It's really funny too, um, but it takes like autism and uh, presents it like that. And it's pretty cool. Um, fuck, if I can remember what that's called, give me two seconds. Yeah. Because uh, it's really good. It's got four seasons. Uh, it sums up nicely. Uh, God, the way I'm looking this up is Michael Rapaport autistic show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so called while, a, while it's you're, called, I found it. It's called Atypical. Uh, if anybody's Atypical. looking, oh okay, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard of that. that. I enjoyed it. Surprisingly enjoyed it because it's like I thought it was just a shitty sitcom and then ended up getting some pretty good emotional depth. I'll I'll be honest, I'm instantly skeptical of any TV show that has autism as a plot point. I'm just uh, they're not gonna do this right. Or they, um, they do it respectfully, and unlike Sia in music. <laughs> <laughs> this one does it respectfully. It went on for four seasons and it deals it autism is definitely like a, a like the a main point in like the first season um like because he's just the they kind of establish the character but throughout the rest of it it's kind of just like a part of his character it's not necessarily the the forefront of it well that's Um, good yeah because you know that's called being a human yeah um can i real quick i'm just looking at my notes to the very opening of the movie of saying there's so i thought it was funny when i first saw the movie um it has this is not based on real people blah 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 especially you jenny beckman bitch <laughs> yeah okay yeah i understand that's supposed to be a joke does that come off as just like insanely cringy. misogynistic and cringy now cringy. yes yeah yeah okay i just it, wanted to it, verify it passed that. you know humor in the 2000s was a lot different it definitely passed back then way more now uh, sure so, like i get it you're being immature on purpose, but like, damn, dude. And then you watch the rest of the movie, you're like, damn, dude. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I hope, I hope you don't identify with this guy too much. I wonder, know? I wonder if that was Mark, if Mark Webb, the guy who directed this, his intention was to fucking paint Summer out as a villain initially, and then he saw that everybody was like, oh, uh, actually, Tom's a villain. He's like, yeah, yeah, that was my intent the whole time. Yeah, no. <laughs> no <cool. laughs> here's the thing: there are a few times where I'm not on Tom's side completely, but I can understand where he's coming from. Like when she, when she's at the bar and she's talking about how love isn't real. Like I get what she's saying, 
But like, but that is that is a damaged person talking. Yeah, like just come the fuck on though. Like, and it, also on his side, where he's like in this fairy tale world talking about how he sees love and falling in love. Yeah. I, I'm you got to find a balance between the two, and that's of course why it doesn't work between them. But I can definitely see why it would be annoying for her to just be like, nope, love isn't real. It's all fake. I mean, that's it's a cool. that's a very Rick Sanchez way of being like, it's just chemicals in your brain, more right? Rrr, rrr, rrr. The, uh, you gotta find a balance, man. And it's definitely, course. I think it's definitely a uh, a young, mid, like early twenties answer to is love real? Is thinking that you have all this experience in life, that yeah. love truly isn't real. So you can make that call now at you know twenty three, twenty four years old. Um, I think that's a very inexperienced, but also thinking you are hella experienced in life. Um, yeah, and th- and of course because of when i first was watching it i didn't have real world relationship experience i had a few short-term girlfriends here and there but all i knew about romance really was on movies and tv so of course i'm kind of like the, i was like oh tom's misunderstood you know was, of yeah, course. Kind, of, kind of like tom he seems to get all of his stuff from movies and tv yeah and yeah, just really just so on the same page here. everybody love isn't real love is not yeah. real <laughs> the only the now. only love that's real is a love between a man and his dog yeah and it's Ugh. funny now watching it it's like of course he doesn't get the end of the graduate and she's like crying and stuff <laughs> and he doesn't understand why i was like oh my god <laughs> i need to rewatch that one too i've watched yeah. that since graduates you know, 17 years old graduate is a 10 out of 10 did we talk about that's it a the, we did it on the podcast for this past summer Go check that episode out, people. Don't watch it. I'm not in it. That's a good one. <laughs> and I love th- those summer series episodes are had, did well. Anyway, um, yeah. That's... This is a 500 days of summer series. We're gonna do Ooh. 500 days of summers for the next seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, for the next 500 days. <laughs> next 500 <Yeah>. days. <laughs> a new yeah. two-hour podcast about every. <laughs> I wanna. I, I do want to say, the music in this again is like peak 2009s oh, indie yeah. pop and I indie used to rock. Listen to music from this all the uh, time d- taking away from take, take away the shins or not the shins i'm sorry the the, the smiths take away the smiths from this movie yeah and every oh was yeah pop, it's you know it's the sweet disposition uh, oh, man. oh yeah i uh i i do want to say it again another thing that just pissed me off about the character is when he's sitting at his desk starts playing his music fucking loudly trying to get her to hear and i was like if i were in that office I would tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> which is which is also that really struck me because I think about this a lot of how juvenile of a thing that is, and it's become almost more common. I think, and I'll get to that it's in a minute. Super manipulative of like, well, of of oh, we have similar interests, therefore we should date. That's a stupid way of thinking because yeah, it, people do just, it nowadays more often. But instead of like cool things like music, it's a uh, it's trauma. <laughs> like that, well there's that too bonding over trauma now codependency right? and stuff yeah. well even even on like tinder you can do passions and your passions can be like netflix or oh I going out to eat and stuff like that television is not an option but netflix is an option which tells you about how highbrow tinder is in netflix and chill bro it's code word to get some dick <laughs> uh i well you can get as much dick as you want casher but yeah, well, oh, Ooh. the the this, writers on this also hey, wrote that was a stuff. joke that would have worked in the 2000s. Yeah, that was a joke that would have worked in 2009. <laughs> exactly. The um, the writers on this also wrote Spectacular Now and The Fault in Our Stars. That makes sense. Yeah, I know you've seen and you've recommended me to watch Spectacular Now. Yeah, so I, I, recommended it. I recommended it like seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, but do you recommend it as? because you love the movie or because it's like an interesting it's like something to study you know i don't remember actually that much about it okay well, yeah, I, only just, one I like i like the movie it's it's definitely different from this i remember liking it the i i refuse to watch the fault in our stars because her having the oxygen mask on in the poster <laughs> is so blatantly manipulative yeah, it's, fucking, it's fucking hot it, it's so it's so blatantly emotionally manipulative i refuse to watch that movie is, yeah, Paul, who, who's Paul in spectacular now is it miles teller who's in that yeah miles think, teller and uh jk like, simmons oh yeah yeah oh well they no. have a love romantic relationship yeah. like the opposite of whiplash 
Is it is it Shailene Woodley and uh, Miles Teller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he's like a drunk. Um, yeah, he's a fall. fuck. Yeah. It's she it's gets her tits out. I don't <laughs> remember her getting her tits out. Yeah, she does. I don't believe you. Anyway, that's not important. Put it, put it it's misogynistic screen. of me to say. Where's yeah. uh, where's my sound? Objectifying fake, women. Fake, 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 fake. Um, we're uh, we're adding soundboards in soon. And, okay, yeah. To, an, another another point to where. I can be on Tom's side occasionally is because they talk outside of the bar and she's like, I'm not interested in relationship. I'm not interested in really anything right now. And then literally the next day he's in the copy room and she just walks up and kisses him on the mouth. Okay. So she set her boundaries though. You can't really get mad at her for, no, I, I know, but it's, boundaries. Like, it's not, it, if she sets boundaries and he, he, she kisses him. It's casual. She he can't sit here and if he if she's already set boundaries, then try to rewrite those boundaries with. No, her. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm just. It's a little weird. Out of nowhere, she didn't seem interested, and then the next day, she just walks in and kisses him. She never said that she wasn't interested in like fucking around with him. She said she wasn't interested in a relationship. That, I know, but she was. She was talking about how like complex all of this is and love and, and, and catching feelings and, and starting up something like she was just talking about how complex it all was. So I guess yeah, that I, is the point. She makes it simple. Like, Oh, I'm going to kiss you, but I don't know. It, it's a very movie thing. Also, of course, if those, you have another conversation, if, you know, if you're in a casual thing and feelings start to come up, that's something you talk about. It's not yeah. something you assume. Um, yeah, and her, just, just, her, just although I, I do feel like walking up to somebody and kissing them in the copier room is a, that would be a confusing moment to be. Yeah. Fair. You guys it, haven't it, watched many uh, uh, episodes of Scrubs or Grey's Anatomy or anything like that. Definitely. I've not. watched a lot of Scrubs. Those so. doctors make out in the fucking supply closets all the time, dude. And there's casual, dude. I don't know. I don't. I, there's, there's too many bodily fluids that aren't the ones you want at a hospital that i can't imagine anybody really being aroused there uh you're, you're fucking wrong <laughs> okay <laughs> gray's no, anatomy no. is not even medically accurate I'm not i gonna think say i think a lot of our view of like her casually coming in there and kissing him i think we all like there's a lot of uh confusion with him because he i don't think he he idealizes sex too i think um and put, puts a lot of pressure on that as a like just because you have sex or casually with someone doesn't mean you necessarily are interested in them no i um, i know but it, well to me I, this might be it's a perspective to, say. Thing, yeah. to me kissing and making out is way more of an intimate gesture than hooking up and just having cheap casual sex i don't know man i've had i've made out with a lot of chicks at bars that i've never seen again i don't know i guess i've only really kissed people that i'm into that's fair. It's, I mean, it's, it's all perspective. It's all how you look at it. And through well, three years, you know, like, maybe not, I don't know. It's, it, it, it is, man. I mean, people can be passionate and things like that. He should have set his boundaries when she did that. Yeah. He should be like, Hey, you can't do this unless it's going to be something more. Yeah, for sure. He definitely that, should have said and, that. And, and that would have solved the movie would have been over. <laughs> you know? I would have solved everything there, but instead we have people who, uh, they, 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 they continue to hold this idealized version that someday that this person will be into me like this. And then whenever they're sick of waiting, they ask and they get their heart broken. And that's completely yeah. on them. You can't sit here and idealize and wait around for someone who is not in the same place with you mentally or physically. Like you right. just can't do that. There's a lot of heartbreak there. I, you know, yeah. We learn the hard way through life and it's one of the hardest lessons to learn. It is. I had a friend who was uh, wanting to date a chick or see her, whatever he wanted to do, and she had no zero idea at all. So he came over and talked about it and cried about it, and then we did dabs like back and forth a bunch. And then <laughs> by the time halfway through the conversation, I had done twenty five dabs and could no longer speak English. Jesus fucking! And I Christ. was like, well. And we just sat in silence, and it was really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a healthier stone. way to cope than most of what you see in this movie. <laughs> yeah, for real. I just think that they, uh, it, it paints a picture on 
very much like establishing boundaries is a big fucking thing man because nowadays especially nowadays sex is more casual than it's actually i think it's less casual than ever I think a lot more people less people are hooking up and having it, it, sex. it definitely dips but and comes back i think i think relationships in general just even with a friendship you've got to set boundaries or, or else you're 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 basically putting yourself in a position to be hurt and that's right not fair to you it's not fair to the other person and of course he is a dingus and doesn't like she of course did set that boundary at the very beginning and someone calls that out later and he's just like oh uh, I, uh he's trying I, to rewrite uh, it man he's trying to erase what was already there yeah. he's trying to erase and, and, it and it still kind of show up on the piece of paper and then write over it but you still see it behind that fucking writing yeah uh, you see your shitty thing over it you know the, the scene like right that. after that though it's like the cutesy talking stage little ikea scene um the cute ass scene which i, I it yeah, is cute, it's still it's, cute. we it's were talking about too because she's serving him food in imaginary kitchen yeah she's reaffirming gender you know, roles but like we were talking about that joel haver episode uh in the talking stage you do cutesy corny shit that's just how it is so uh that that scene still holds up to me and it holds up especially because before that scene they start the they start it with the same scene, but it's months later and oh, none of the cutesy of the shit. shit's working at all. Yeah. And it's yeah, awkward. He's, she's sick of his shit. She's like, and it's it's kind of manipulative on his part because he's like, Oh, I remember something that we used to that we used to like. Let me let me see if I can try to goad her into being yeah. happy. The problem is is not enough Dating. time. This doesn't no. take place over enough time. It only takes place all of it over a year and a half ish, less than that. It's cringy. It doesn't make sense. Do you think it'd be better if it was 700 days of summer? I think it would be better over the course of a few years. Well, that's especially just because, marriage. especially just because, be like three months after they ended things, he sees her again and she has a ring on her finger. Three months? That was the hey, thing man. when I first watched the movie that really stuck out to me and was you weird. bitch. <laughs> first, first of all, in my head canon for 500 days of summer, it could be longer. But 500 days of summer sounds a lot better than 1,200 days of summer or something like that. That sounds cool to me. 120 days of summer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but people, it, it, it's, I think it dumbfounded him. And that's where it's like, that's kind of where I resonated when I was younger. It dumbfounded him that someone can move on so quickly while you're still. Well, it's up. her, though. That's why that's it's so weird. He's dumbfounded by, well, man. When you know, you know. There's a lot of people I know. Yeah, that's like, what she says, but like no. three months, dude? Any rational person? She's the one being rational about love. She should be rational about three months. She's not really. I think it's, she, uh, also, it's, she's not rational either. Like, she moved from Michigan because she was bored. Oh, yeah. Like That's fair. Not a whole lot of rational. Nah. I understand moving. Honestly, saying the weather would be a better reason yeah. to move. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to live in yeah. Michigan for that reason. Uh, you know, love you, Michigan fans, but I'm not used to the cold. Uh, I'd love to see a follow up for 500 days of summer called 300 days till divorce, you know, <laughs> like she's probably divorced now. It's probably not a happy marriage. It may be though, but you know, you get Just to call it. Where... I'm hanging myself tonight. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's just a lot of this. I can, is there anything inherently wrong with being corny and cheesy with that love? No, not really. And I was such a hapless romantic as a fucking 17, 18 year old really? that I lapped much, it all up like a dog in the back of a Chinese restaurant, man. How, how much Adrian, I'm just going to straight up ask you, how much did movies completely screw over or screw with your perceptions of relationships? It screwed me up a, a bit for a little while. Yeah. Um, no, no. Being the Kino cowboy. Yeah. Um, you know, the, it is what it is. No, I get it. Your first relationship, it, it is a bit of, I, you can feel like playing house a bit, you know, at times, um, which isn't bad. You got to have that. You got to break, break a few eggs to make an omelet. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I, when I was younger, I was, I didn't really, and I'm still like this a little, I didn't really see the point of dating casually to get experience or to just grow and learn about yourself. Um, so 
I think that's something that yeah, I, I uh, when I was younger. I dated the fuck for most of my high school and <laughs> 20s. Um, I didn't date in high school. And a lot of that's honestly... Well, I guess was, high, school, there was, high school, not so much. There was nobody in high school I wanted to date because it was high school and they were high schoolers and therefore all stupid. I'm so, super thankful for my relationship in high school. It was like a two-year relationship almost. And uh, yeah, yeah, it uh, helped me figure out a little bit more about myself and how I needed to treat the next person I, I was with. And, sure. uh, you know, I'm forever thankful for that. And then the next person, you know, yeah, we don't I was yeah. I was too busy playing role playing games at the local <laughs> land center. <laughs> yeah, you know, my my first big relationship was a year, and I'm glad it happened for sure. I was 18 and turned 19. I was yeah, 18 and a half turned 19 and a half, and then that's a good uh, age. You're a young then, adult. Uh, you're independent. You make those mistakes. And then you move on. Her came out like a month and a half after we broke up. <laughs> it was a good. That was a movie that we all went to see in theaters, and every single one of us cried. It was like six grown, like middle, or like that yeah, grown adults, like fucking in there. Like, oh, so I would say we were grown at nineteen. I think it was. Uh, I think it was all men, and then uh, the girl I was dating at the time. And yeah, all of us cried, and she didn't. Ooh, uh, foreshadow. It's kind of like the reverse of the graduate scene in this movie. <laughs> Dude, it's kind of funny because like uh, me and Cody Long both took our girlfriends at the time to go see Schindler's List in theaters <laughs> and we both cried and neither of them shed a tear. That's that's disturbing. Actually. Yeah. Um, disturbing. Yeah, man. I'm glad I saw Schindler's List for the first time in theaters. That was dope. I'm weird Great, and jealous. The, uh, it's a weird a intimate romantic, moment. What a romantic movie, man. That's my favorite Valentine's Day movie. <laughs> uh uh, the scene that got me is uh after that ikea scene he's like he's in the mirror at, at his apartment like sweating like looking at himself like i'm like dude calm down like have you <laughs> never had sex before that's what it comes off like he's about to lose his virginity but he's not but he's acting like it i don't think so i think maybe he had some flings like drunken flings in the past but maybe not a real i know but it was just like, we don't get a lot of it? background on we really don't get a it's a pretty short movie it's 90 minutes we don't it's get a, a it's a, that's background. one of the strengths is that it's a breeze 90 minutes yeah it is I, honestly it felt long for me, me personally really but yeah i just i but i liked it back in high school i'm not a huge fan of this movie now personally i'm fine with it i'm glad i watched it again but you know i was um, never a fan i liked it when i first watched it and i like it now it's I. It's a movie that I like. It's right. impartial yeah, to me. Yeah, I it's, like it. It's, it's, I'm impartial to it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. There, I like all the stuff that makes us stand out. Like right after he has sex with her for the first time, he's walking around. Everyone's smiling at him. He sees Harrison Ford in the mirror. I do instead love of that. him. And and then it breaks out into like a dance scene. for a second. I don't know. That's funny. That is a great post sex scene, and I wish the movie had more of that shit in it. Yeah. Cause that shit cracked me up. Dude, that's how it that feels. That's how it feels after a dry spell. You're just like, yeah, I'm the man. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. I, I don't know if you guys watch Parks and Recs, but uh, you can always tell when Ron Swanson has sex because he uh, he uh, wears the same red shirt that Tiger Woods does right. every PGA tour he wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fucking funny. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The first time I had sex, I uh, pulled out pulled the condom off, and then went to my phone and played I Just Had Sex by Lonely Island. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. We all have our celebratory thing. I think that's... Yeah, I went, I we all went it. to Waffle kind of House a, after I lost my virginity. <laughs> I wasn't there. I came no, back a few months later, and he shook my hand silently, and that was our code. Yeah. <laughs> that was so <laughs> yeah. fucking funny. I think I think I hate to say it, it is a, a certain man thing to do to fucking just feel fucking great after sex, so, put up with it, you know. Also, it makes sense that he's. It just instills the fairy tale nature of his mind, where he's everyone's dancing. There's literal animated bird and shit. And I'm like, damn. I love it. I love it. So I do much. like that a lot. I also, like, movie. also like when he's broken up with her and he's at the movies and it's a bunch of Bergman films, but it's starring him instead. I was like, ha ha, I get this persona reference now. Oh yeah. Now, now I understand it. I was like, Oh yeah. I'd seen, I'd seen seven seal at the time, not persona. Yeah. Um, 
Although that, that's yeah. such a, an interesting thing, almost out of character. What does he think of Bergman if he can't even interpret the graduate correctly? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, because Bergman's, I consider myself pretty, you know, fairly adept at being able to critically assess things. And even something like Persona, that takes a couple viewings to really sink in. Yeah. And of course, uh, what did up? you guys think about his friends? The, the two they just seem like pretty England. generic dudes to me yeah, yeah they're foils um one of them honestly one one thing i really liked is i had the quote written down the guy the long-haired one not the drunk yeah. who is drunk at the karaoke bar but the other guy who i forget where else i've seen him he's but, on criminal minds oh yeah that's it he's in yeah. criminal minds yeah. uh the which the is a show one, I watched with the other way. friends from The Ringer and played a mentally handicapped person. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite quote from that movie is from him. Is oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we went to go get ice cream. He's like, When the fuck did we get ice cream? Yeah, that's sad. I like that movie. I don't Only, care. I saw that on TV once it's when so I was younger. Bad. It's, so it's, I don't, it's, it's not good, but I, I enjoy Shout it. Shout out to Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, but, <laughs> dude, it, that i'm not even gonna go there he's also the snozberries guy so it's he gives me oh yeah the snozberries guy oh. snozberries tastes like snozberries that guy uh <laughs> he's a great actor but <laughs> great little character actor well there there's one point where um long-haired guy who's been dating the same chick since <laughs> middle school or whatever is like you know uh robin she's better than my dream girl she's real which is something that you know that's something more profound as you get older because yeah, the like, older you get, the, the, the more you realize y- you don't marry for love or you don't marry for love alone. That's kind of a stupid You marry thing. for lust. You marry some big titty goth girl so you can wrap your head in her mommy milkers. Yeah. You marry Good for one. that gorilla grip pussy, dog. <laughs> you marry because she's the first to say yes to anal. <laughs> Okay. i do like um <laughs> i do like the uh the one use of the f word is when clark clark greg is like <laughs> says fuck you whore i was like damn yeah stupid but i don't know uh did you call, did you call time him clark duke huh did you call him clark duke i think his name is clark greg right yeah i thought you said clark duke i was like no, that's, no. Not, that's not the guy from sex drive <laughs> <laughs> he's an arkansas native um it's, I movie. forgot that Coulson's in this fucking movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was cool. The part uh, of this like movie that. that speaks to me still to this day is when they're just roaming around the city. That song Sweet Disposition is playing. He's pointing out architecture to her. Of course, he lusts for that kind of stuff. And, you know, 18, 19 year old me he wants to see my dreams come true like that. And I still do. I'm still doing my thing. But that just really threw me back to being a late teenager so that still holds up to me i thought it was poetic that the last conversation he has with her about marriage and all that stuff is at that location his favorite location right uh, I, I, don't know, I thought it was cool uh he was kind of a shit during that conversation uh just kind of being a little bit more harsh towards her well i don't, I don't even remember that part where are they or what she like sits about. down and they talk about her marriage and he's just saying this is very shit. And she's oh, yeah. just like she's not really playing into his snide comments, which I liked. Yeah, also, she ain't paying him no motherfucking mind. Yeah, well, <laughs> because she's moved on and he hasn't. The what? six what? months. Here's the thing. I will say one thing. Isn't it kind of weird to invite your ex to a party and not mention that you've gotten engaged in the yes. meantime? That's definitely that very weird. weird. That's why there's a few things that I can get on Tom's side about. Right, for sure. I think that bugged me when I first not saw as much as when I first watched it, but no, for sure. But that's I'd something say, I would be, I mean, it would be weird, you know, Casher, if you invited me to a party and you were like, I saw you have an engagement ring. I'd be like, Casher, did you not bring this up at any point? <laughs> you were in, like, yeah. We never dated, but like, that's, oh, that's, not, that's not an engagement <laughs> ring. That's a purity ring. I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> that's why I um, need to do an exorcism on that ring. <laughs> <laughs> After watching it again, I, I can say it's 70% Tom with his bullshit and then about 30 percent of her for sure these are two toxic people uh, you know it's definitely more out. on his side but i just imagine 
how much smoother if you would just learn to roll with shit and not have to fucking have a label imagine how smooth it would have gone nah he could have turned that around it could have flourished maybe he was maybe he wasn't that good at sex and that's why she didn't stay i don't know the yeah because like part of the another reason where i can be on tom's side is it's totally not fair to just say oh we're just friends that's not fair you it's, it is it is interesting because there is that weird gray area with there's FFB gray area you just don't call yourself and say we're just friends that's bullshit no like you kiss and make out and spend all your time together and love on each other you can't just say that that's I, that's, uh, a, that's a mean thing to say that I, is i I, I do that to people. But also, <laughs> he, he's like, no, we're a couple. That's even I, worse. I don't know. I uh, I don't look as at sex and kissing and being intimate as, as, as you know, a... Castro, it, we don't know. fucking kiss and have sex. No, I, I have friends that... We don't I, hold each other's hands and go to Ikea. I've... Asher and I go to Ikea every weekend, Adrian. No, but it, and we, and on, we a less, on a less serious you. note, like I have friends who are like, will come over and we'll fucking like cuddle on the couch and watch movies and stuff. I know, but there's a distinction like, I, I, clear uh, yeah. by watching their actions that they are not just friends. There's a look. There's a look you get, and that's the look that you're just like, hey, I'm not trying to pursue. You don't have to call it a boyfriend or girlfriend, but to say it was just friends. She even, um, yeah i don't know no it's a clear it's and that's something that really does and a lot of people i think accuse you know might accuse me of being a prude for this but that is something that's very frustrating about modern dating and also kind of sad about modern dating i think it's great that relationship labels have been liberated from the nuclear family ideal but at the same time it it everything and not even just in romantic or sexual relationships like there is a lack of committal that is brought upon by changes in societal norms and also changes in technology even the fact that you can leave leave somebody on red as opposed to having a phone conversation with them you know that that creates that sort of distance which you know is saddening and this is really pre social media explosion it was there but facebook was still somewhere to just show photos of your vacation it wasn't what it's become it wasn't oculus and meta <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe they should remake this movie but inside the metaverse jesus christ no thank you uh, except i am a part of the metaverse i now own anderson pock in Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> you're so proud of that that's um <laughs> that's a little it. racist <laughs> you're, no, you're, you own him i, I didn't mean it <laughs> big fan <laughs> I, I will say one, one of the most iconic scenes from the 2000s that set off memes and everything is the expectations versus reality it's great that's a legitimately great scene. scene yeah it reminds me of a lot knock on wood bringing this name up of um annie hall when there's you know in annie hall they're speaking and then there's subtitles yeah of what they're actually oh yeah saying. reminds me a lot of that that's just like, a little it's parallel just, fuck woody allen i like annie hall annie hall's one of his more tame works when it comes to fucking like him fucking 13 year olds so yeah because it's like a 10 year difference in age and yeah they're, they're 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 both a consenting adults unlike <laughs> fucking manhattan where the woman's a fucking kid uh, i haven't seen manhattan. i can't I'm wait not for going him. to i can't wait for him to die <laughs> okay why don't, you, why don't you go do something about it casher yeah uh go find it act. <laughs> patriot act uh yeah that's just uh man i love that scene and no it's great and it, it is you can apply that scene to god pretty much any situation in life not just yeah. going yeah. to parties yeah. with your There's ex too many times have have, have any of you because I haven't, re- well, that's not entirely true, um, successfully continued a friendship with an ex. Yeah. Yeah. Well, most of, most yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. yeah most of uh, them. For a while, but. My fucking ex-girlfriend's about to come hang out over here right now. Like, she's okay. on her way to hang out for the Super Bowl. The, uh, that's cool. The, 
um i guess i did for a little bit but then i moved to spain and we kind of fell off but yeah it's like i don't keep in super contact with all of them uh there's a couple that i you know don't talk to at all there's some that like i'll casually talk to through facebook and then i've got a couple that come and hang out with me every now and then they're part of my friend groups and stuff like that so well that's 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 pleasant yeah other one the the ones i don't talk to uh one of them she's uh she's pretty cool i just we just don't get along very well so i just don't talk to her and then the other one i just don't have any fucking desire to talk to so did you uh did you guys i like that we tennis is in this movie oh yeah <laughs> it's peak like late 2000s core yeah. fuck i loved it yeah, yeah bro <laughs> and just in time now they're doing switch sports yeah, yeah so shout out to nintendo direct dropping some kind of heat the um do you Eaters. think do you think realistically that vicky chick who he goes on a blind date with would even listen to his bs that long Maybe I, I don't know. Sometimes man, people man should have slept with her. Man, that would have got him over that. That chick was hot. No, she was not. Okay, but, uh, was okay. It doesn't really matter. Uh dude. Yeah, when it cuts to her like sitting there, like oh my god, at at a uh, karaoke, uh, I almost had to look away. It was so lame, so cringe. I uh, the the cringiest part of the whole movie is at the end when he invites that girl to coffee, and her name ends up being Autumn. Oh, that's that's a pretty. Yeah, that was a cheesy fucking ending. I was like, are you it, fucking kidding? It, but here's the question, and let's get to the ending. Yeah, is he going to repeat the same mistakes? Yes, I fucking hope not. Jesus, I don't know. Like, Minka is, Kelly, the lady who plays fucking uh, the Autumn, is much hotter. So maybe. Well, and, and it's like the the narrator's talking about how he's learned that fate isn't real and this and that and then he's like well actually hmm <laughs> so so then maybe he thinks fate is he still believes in it yeah, so he might repeat a, the same cycles it's a in pleasant case, that's a ending. fucking horror movie yeah. <laughs> maybe he doesn't learn anything from his mistakes you know the only complaint i have is that uh if this would be more realistic if there was a scene where uh joseph gordon levitt was uh jacking off and crying oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it would it would be you could say that about any movie. You could say there or it'd, it'd be more realistic. Avatar would be a lot more realistic if someone was jacking off and crying. Well, uh, it, you, it, think, you could say, you could say like this would be more realistic if we saw everybody's bowel movement every day. In the hey, movie. it's like, a fucking joke, guys. Let's move on from it. It was just a funny haha. Oh, oh, jerk ca- off and cry when they said handle fucking blowback, doctor comedian. Blow my back out. But so does the movie hold up to you? It's it's still uh, it, it's a good movie. Uh, like I said, it's for me. I'm super impartial towards it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Uh, not something I'm going to seek out every year and watch. Um, yeah, but glad I got sure. a, glad I got a rewatch of it. Um, I like it about the same. But also, I, it didn't I, resonate I, with me super hard when I was younger, as much as it probably did for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it didn't. It didn't. I I actually probably have a similar opinion to you, Casher. I yeah. liked it when I was younger, but I was not. Yeah. Blown away by it. Um, I, I really do, wasn't I, blown away either. I just yeah. really, you know, like right, I'm saying, like it, it, it felt more relatable. Well, it, and it, I, I didn't, I didn't really ever relate to Tom's character that much. Um, yeah. The Must be nice. he didn't play enough video games, and again, he didn't jerk off and cry. Yeah, and you know I'm I'm an expert at both of those. So uh, <laughs> the um, the ending I remember when I first watched it was kind of weird of her after like six months or two hundred days or whatever getting engaged, which is still you know weird. But she's a weird person. She's quirky um, and clearly unstable on her own. Who's way. that girl? But uh, I I actually think I almost would recommend this movie now that more that we've moved past it as a culture. I mean, past that era as a culture and the conversation around dating relationships has progressed a bit. So the toxic behaviors, which were noticeable, not even close to being subtle. um, In the original, you can have a more, uh, I don't know, a better conversation about it now. I mean, I'm I'm ready for Gen Z to get a hold of this fucking movie. Ready to see uh see what they what are they gonna say they're just gonna i just think it's it's an interesting i like seeing i think it's interesting seeing what you gen z would have to watch something other than a superhero movie so good luck Ooh, that's a strange joke you can make that joke about me 
um Casher needs to watch something other than a superhero movie <laughs> yeah and look out for next episode book of boba fett <laughs> book book of boba t thanks Let's for go. listening guys uh yeah tune in next time happy I valentine's think. day happy valentine's day